Welcome to the second half of the Learn WebDriver I.O. video course. This is the first video of the professional add-on. We're starting off with a module on Cloud Selenium services. So far in the course, we've used our development computer for our browser needs. But what if you want to test on a browser that isn't available on your local computer? Cloud Selenium services fill that need by providing a wide array of operating systems and browsers for you to test on. While you will need to pay a subscription fee for advanced features from those services, all the ones we'll talk about provide a free account level for low use needs. There's nothing particularly special about these services that you can't set up yourself with a cluster of computers and some effort. The benefit provided is really in the ease of setup. Instead of spending your time configuring various operating systems and browsers, you can instead spend it writing tests. There are several Cloud Selenium services available, the three we'll take a look at in this module are some of the most popular services out there, and they already include built-in integration with WebDriver I.O. We'll talk about integration with all three services in the other videos of this module, but first we want to take a look at credential storage. All the services require an ID and key to hook into their service. This is a basic security feature, allowing only your specific sessions to connect in. The easiest method for managing this is to add the user and key property to your WDIO configuration file. WebDriver IO will look at the ID you pass in and determine which service you're trying to connect with. The problem with this method is that it's very insecure. Anyone who looks into your configuration file will see your credentials and be able to use them for themselves. Fortunately, there are several alternatives to this. They include passing in the information from the command line, using a secret file for your credentials, and finally, storing your credentials in your computer's environmental variables. Let's start out with the command line options. If we pass in the help argument when running WebDriver I.O. from the command line, we'll be given a list of options we can use. Note that I'm prefixing my arguments with double dashes, which tells NPM to pass the following information to the command that it's running. It's OK if that doesn't make sense. Just know that if you're running WebDriver I.O. through NPM and you want to pass in arguments, you need to proceed them with double dashes. Through the command line, we can pass in a user and key parameter containing the credentials needed to connect to our services. While this is better than storing them in your configuration file, it has two drawbacks. The first is that you'll constantly need to remember your user and key information. Your key likely isn't an easy to remember phrase, so that can be a constant source of frustration. Also, it can be potentially insecure in a shared environment Anyone with access to your command line history could see your credentials. The next method is storing your credentials in a secret file. This is a file that won't be included in any source code management tool you have, thereby reducing the risk of accidentally sharing it. To use this method, create a new file, name it something like secrets.js. In it, you'll export your user and key information in the form of a JavaScript object. This is similar to how other Node.js files export information. Then, in your configuration file, you'll load the secret information by using a require statement. Once loaded, you'll pass the information to your configuration via the user and key properties. Be sure, though, that you don't accidentally add this file to your source code management tool. If you're using git, that means adding the file name to your git ignore file. The last method we'll talk about, and the one I recommend, is to store your credentials in your computer's environment variables. This matches with the standard industry practice for all sorts of personal information management and how the WebDriver I.O. test runner handles storage. It also allows for easier integration with third-party tools like CICD services. Many of these services have built-in environment variable handling, making it easier to set up your credentials during integration. For now, we'll stick with running through how to configure environmental variables on Mac and Windows. On a Mac, and on Linux machines as well, you'll set your variable via the command line. With it open, type export, then the variable name you want to set, and what you want to set it to. You can validate your command worked by echoing out the variable you just set, preceding it with a dollar sign. One important note, setting the variable from within the command line only makes it work for that session. If you were to restart your command line window, say you reboot your computer, that information would be gone. For example, if I open a new terminal window and run my echo statement again, the variable won't contain any information. To avoid having to run this command every time a new command prompt session is created, you can add it to your command prompt startup scripts. 
There are many variations of startup scripts used by different systems. I'll be showing one version, but it may not apply to your environment. Despite this, the same concept will work. As I mentioned, when you start a command prompt, it runs a startup script. The name of the script my system uses is .profile and lives in my home directory. Pay attention to the dot preceding the name. This is not a typo and is part of the name. Other names you might see are bash profile and bash rc. There are some subtle differences between each of these, so find what works for you and stick to it. Opening our profile file, we'll scroll to the bottom of it and paste in our export command. We'll save the file, then open a new command prompt and echo our credentials out. Now we have our environment set up for continued use. Windows systems are a bit different. To set a permanent variable, use the setx command. It also doesn't use an equal sign in the command, and you don't need to worry about adding it to a profile file. Just run the setx command, open a new command prompt, and you can echo out your variable. The last change we need to make is inside our configuration file. At the top of our config, we're going to add two properties, user and key. Node can access environmental variables via the process.env global. We can reference our personal user and key by using process.env.seleniumuser and process.env.seleniumkey. Be sure to document whichever method you use in your test suite installation instructions, as it may be new to anyone jumping into the code base.